When it comes to supermarket beers, we're used to Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, even Asda. But have you ever considered Marks and Spencer's? Well, they've released new beers and some of them are very exciting. And today I'm going to showcase some of the beers that they've just released in Marks and Spencer's and drinking one of them that's going to be very special to me. Keep on watching to find out more. Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Today, we're going to do an unveiling of the new beers in Marks & Spencer's. Now, Marks & Spencer's isn't the normal place I go as a supermarket. You know, maybe I'm going there to buy my big wasted trousers, but that's another story. But in terms of beer, it's not somewhere that you'd expect them to one sell beer and also craft beer. But some of the breweries they've got in there are quite quite interesting. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the seven beers that I've picked up from Marks & Spencer's this week. Some of them I think have been in there a while, but I, because I haven't been in there, I haven't drank them before, um, I'm going to sort of just present them. And I think, but I still think there's a, quite a few of them that are new. And one of them that we're going to be drinking today is from one of my favourite breweries, and I never expected to see them in Marks & Spencer's. So let's go through them now. So, seven beers. I'm going to go through the ones that I think are ones that have been in there before. We'll start with this one. This is by um, Amundsen. You know, they're pretty well known. They do some uh, quite interesting sort of beers. Certainly, uh, we've had a few. We've always had one of them, one of their very, uh, their chocolate stouts. Uh, but this is in a 440ml can. It's called Chuggernaut, and it's a hazy session IPA. I think this one has been around, been in, in Sainsbury's before, because I'm sure I've seen it. Not, no, sorry, I'm not beaten, sorry, Sainsbury's, Marks and Spencer's before, because I'm sure I've seen um, it appear where people drank it on forums and, and, and on YouTube and stuff. So but I'm going to try that. Whether I review that, I'm not sure. The other one, which I think is another one, is about a company which way back, probably in the first sort of first beers that I bought from the bottle shop were for Anarchy Brew Company, and I bought two of them, and because I, I do love their artwork. Uh, they've always got this sort of like, it is a very sort of heavy metal in terms of their, their artwork. But this is another session IPA called Citra Star, 4.1%, but it's in a little can. So this one was only, um, I think this was only a couple of quid, that one. All the others are £3, so I think one of them was £3.50. Uh, and then this is the other one, which I'm not sure whether it's been in or not, but this is a Magic Rock. This is, a, a for some reason, they seem to be big on the old Session IPAs. This is a lychee Session IPA. So I thought, well, that looks a bit different. Um, but I've not seen this one before. I've not seen it reviewed. But I know Magic Rock have got a new one in um, Asda that I, haven't, I didn't see when I was in there. So, But I don't know whether this is a, something new or not. But I'll pick this one up as well. And then we got going to the four that I know are new. Uh, this is from the Electric uh bear brewing company electric bear brewing company yep uh this is called shimmer down lovely really bright and really not got a nice sort of textured can artwork this is a, a pile out again a lot of these cans like supermarket beers don't go into huge amounts of detail so i don't know what sort of hops it is it's 4.1 percent before i try that i thought that'd be quite light um and then we've got uh, a beer by mckellar that seems to be you know hitting into these supermarkets this is a New England uh, Palau. Yeah, pretty snazzy looking artwork as well. And this one called Do Stuff Together. This one's coming in at, what's the percentage of this one? So why do, yeah, sometimes some of these, 4.7%. So, you know, quite a lot, you know, sort of another Palau. But a New England Palau, so I like the sounds of that. Again, doesn't tell us anything on there in terms of the types of hops, but that's a new one. And then the this one here, the penultimate new one, is a brew by numbers. Again, it's it seems like they have a lot of O fives. And I've recently found out that when it's O five, it's part of their IPA range. So this is an IPA. It's a New England IPA. Uh, four point uh, five point five percent, four forty mil can. Um, this is a brand new beer as well. Uh, brew by numbers. And then the last one, and the one that I'm going to drink now. I was very surprised. This is a Polly's beer. So 
I don't know if you remember last year, there was a Polly's uh, and Tiny Rebel collaboration that was in Tesco, Pineapple Express, I think it was called. Um, but Polly's have never been in supermarkets on their own. And I'm quite surprised because they do have a, you know, they're quite a small brewery, even though they do sort of churn out lots of different beers. I mean, they, they, they basically don't really brew anything more than once, you know, in terms of the names of their beers. They're always different. There was a couple of new ones every week. Uh, but this one's called Moonwrecker. It's a Palau. It's got Citra, Columbus, Mosaic and Simcoe in it. And as I say, this is obviously being brewed specially for Marks and Spencers. I believe it's only a, sh a limited run. So I wanted to get, get hold of this and, and drink it. And I just got to, we've got to realise that Polly's, you know, they make fabulous beers, um, but they're really full of flavours. They use a lot of hops. And I wonder whether they can, you know, successfully brew these sort of beers, which are specifically for Marks and Spencers at the at the price point they are. Three pounds. You can't buy a Polly's beer for three pounds. I think the cheapest Polly's beer I've bought is maybe about four pound fifty for a Palau. But more often than not, you're paying upwards of five, five and a half, six pounds. And for some of their double and triples, even more than that. So I'm interested in this one, and this is the one that I wanted to try first. So let's get this beer out of the can and into a glass. We'll d review the other ones over the over time. I seem to have a lot of beer in my uh, in my fridge at the moment that I just just can't seem to get through. Really, every time I think, oh, I've bought some beer, and then something in the supermarkets. There is a little beer festival that has uh, started this week. Um, I've let a quick look at the, what's in it, and there's nothing that really jumps out. There's a few from last time that I may buy because they're cheap, but I don't know if I'm, I'm sure there'll be lots of other YouTubers reviewing it. But unless I see something from them that I really like the sounds of and it sounds good, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to really go into that just because I've got so much beer to get through. The other thing is I'll say now, I don't want to make this video go on too long, but um, I'm also going back into Beer 52. I know that I stopped it, you know, in the, um, after, I think it was March, February, March time. So it's only been a few months I've stopped it. But that's the one thing about Beer 52. They do like their marketing. And they've been sending me emails and stuff saying, oh, we'd like you to come back and all the rest of it. And they've been offering me like, oh, we can go for you it for the, a £24 box for £12 if you want to come back. And it's like, I was thinking, oh, I'm tempted, but I'm not... I'm not going to do it because I've got enough beer. And then I got an email from them this week saying, we've got a Belgian box, we've got a limited run of them. We want, to, want you to come back. We, you can have 12, you can have eight beers, a box of eight beers for zero pounds. And I thought, well, if it's free, yeah, why not? You know, I can, if I might get it and I might say, yeah, I might start it for a few months over the summer, uh, but I could also stop it and I've, I've got a box of beer for free. So people out there that have maybe still on Beer 52 want to stop it for a while, it's worthwhile doing that because they will just wait and they'll come back with a, with a very good offer for you. But that's, that, but that's that, that's the beers that we're doing. Let's get this beer into a glass and see if it's going to be the sort of quality that we expect from Polly, both in aroma, uh, flay and flavour, really. So, beer in a glass. Yep, it looks lovely and cloudy. We've got two fingers, just off white head. It's a sort of golden orange, yellowy orange colour, hazy as you like. Uh, this is only a 5% parallel, but already I can smell the aromas. It's very much trademark of what I expect from a Polly's. Open the can, before you put it to the nose, you can smell those real juicy tropical sort of aromas. And it smells lovely. I mean, it's it's almost got its, Polly's have almost got their, their own unique sort of tropical sort of smell. You can, you can almost smell Polly's these days, you know. It's It's just a real punch bowl of tropical notes you've got pineapple chunks in there you've got papaya in there you've got um mango in there you've got passion fruit and peach in there you've got citrus fruits in there you've got elements of grapefruit in there it's all sort of in the mix it smells great let's see if it tastes good cheers everyone That is a great beer, especially three quid. It's probably not got the body that I normally would expect, but then 
Again, I do drink quite a lot of the IPAs from Polly's, not less so the Pale Owls. So it's going to be lighter. The carbonation, I would say, is a little bit higher than I would normally expect from a Polly's beer. But the flavour's definitely there. Lots of tropical pineapple, mango, papaya, all in the mix there. Bit of passion fruit, bit of orange peel, lemons, limes. I mean, similar to the aroma, really. Yeah, I mean, it's full of flavour. It's up there. I mean, it's not up there with the best of Polly's, but I don't think they've cut too many corners. No, don't tell me, don't get me wrong, I think they may have cut some corners to get this out at three quid, for, unless Marks and Spencers are literally making a loss on it. But there's lots and lots of flavours in there. And if you'd sort of said, oh, this is a Polly's beer and you just drank it, I would have gone, yeah, it's a good Polly's beer. Not a great one, but it's a good one. And that's exactly what it is. But then you've got to sort of think, you've pa I've paid three quid, I've bought it from the supermarket. I mean, M&S is almost not as convenient as a lot of the mass big supermarkets. I mean, I'm lucky that I live in Chester and we've got one of the biggest in Europe, M&S is here. Um, so, I, so it, you know, if they're going to put the beers in, you're going to put them in there. But the flavour's there. The mouthfeel, maybe not. But again, you know, on another day, you could probably have a Polly's that you can buy from a bottle shop for five quid and think, yeah, it's similar to this. It's it's a great supermarket beer. A good Polly's. Again, it's got so much. I've drank so many supermarket beers and beers in general that you start sort of trying to get my head around it. But for me, the mouth feels a bit, a little bit lighter. But then it is a, but it's a pale owl. So again, am I comparing it with some of those IPAs that I've had from them recently? I'm not sure. Full of flavour. I mean, it's probably, you know, when I think of some pale owls I've had that have been very lacking. I mean, even if you'd seen the day a video I did a, a little while ago, the uh, with the what the two, one way mirror, two way mirror, it was nice, but it didn't pack the flavour that this has got. This has got a really nice flavour. You've got four different types of hops in there. So they've not skimped on that sort of level. I think that's great. Is it the best supermarket beer? Well, it's up there with the best, but until I sort of really think about these scores for it, I'm not sure. Is it as good as the Northern Monk IPAs? Maybe not. Is it as good in terms of pale owl as well? I don't know, there's many pale owls that are as good as that. I think there's probably a very, very good pale owl. But let's get some scores. Okay, the scores are in for Moonwrecker by Polly's. First beer that I've seen from Polly's on their own in a supermarket, this time Marks and Spencer's, three quid a can. It's a, it's a very good beer. Is it the best beer from Polly's? No, it isn't, but it is one of the best Palos you can get in a supermarket. First thing first, aroma. Well, this is the one part where I don't think they really cut any corners because it's got a real distinctive Polly's type of aroma, full of tropical fruits and citrus fruits and a bit of grapefruit. And it's got all the fruits in there. Nothing really jumps out saying, oh, this is very pineapple or this is very heavy on the mango. It's just got all of them in, in a very nice and balanced way. And it's typical Polly's, you pop the can open before you've even put it to your nose, the room sort of fills with that lovely aroma that really is really inviting. So uh, for the aroma, I'm giving it 14. Appearance-wise, it's a lovely hazy pale owl. Looks pretty good. Head's pretty much, you know, not much there, but you can sort of nice lace in the glass and it's a, it's a beautiful colour. So I'm giving it a solid 8 out of 10. Flavour-wise, well, like the aromas, there's, there's nothing that really jumps out in terms of fruit. There's a pineapple and peach and mango i mean i can reel off all the all the fruits that i can think of really and they're all in here in some sort of way there's no sort of big juicy fruit up front and then a sort of a back-end grapefruit or a, or a back-end sort of bitterness no bitterness the flavor pretty much stays the same from the first mouthful to even when it's sitting in your mouth but it's just a very, very easy drinking pale ale. It's light. It's maybe a little bit more carbonated than I would like. Um, but, you know, it's. I think sometimes if you're drinking a lot of those very sort of 
soupy like juice bombs of a of ipas and sometimes you need something with a little bit more fizz in it a little bit more carbonation and i think that it's just for a pale ale, i think it's just got the right sort of balance so flavor i'm giving it 34 value for money three quid for a polys it's got to be a nine out of ten for me uh, I mean, I'm tempted to give it 10 out of 10, but I think 9 out of 10 is a solid price. It's a good price for a 5% pale ale, and it's a good polys. I'm still thinking whether it's the best uh, pale ale that I've had. I mean, the the uh, the London Beer Company one, which I, it seems like ages ago since I've had that, um, was a really good pale ale. Um, the new ones in the new cloud water ones it's much better than that parallel for a start um so it's probably pretty much up there with the top parallels i'm giving it nine for value though overall experience well this is a really good beer i mean i could buy loads of these thinking I'll buy four of these and it's going to cost me 12 quid you know i could spend i could spend nearly 25 quid if i buy four polys beers from directly from them so i think that there are elements that it's not quite up there. But again, maybe I'm tainted by the fact that it's a 5% pale ale and I'm used to drinking poly IPA, IPAs. So it's really nice though. I mean, it's got a lovely fruity flavour. It's really easy to drink. The carbonation is a little bit higher, but that's sometimes you want that from a pale ale. I don't think they've really cut too many corners in terms of flavour. I think if you've never had a Polly's before, but you you can access Marks and Spencers, this if you can imagine drinking this and thinking, wow, this is quite nice. Well, if you have that and then you go and buy them direct, all the different types of ones that they release on a, on a weekly basis, you'll be a bigger fan of Polly's as I am, really. So I'm giving this one 15 from my overall experience. And we top those scores up and we get 80. It's a highly recommended beer. It's a very good score on 80 for a supermarket beer. It's an Iron Maiden beer. It's the heaviest of heavy metal. M&S. I hope the rest of the M&S beers are good. You know, you expect maybe, you, oh, we're going to go to M&S, you're going to spend four quid. But three quid for this beer, I think it's cracking value. And I'm glad to see Polly's in there. If that gets more people, you know, seeing the Polly's name and then deciding, oh, I saw that in the bottle shop. I had one of those in Marks and Spencer's. I really liked it. I'm going to try that. Then that's really, really good. And it's good for the brewery. I think Polly's are a cracking brewery. Um, I saw um, recently, I can't remember, if he, he might have even been reviewing this one at the time, but Simon um, Craft, Real Ale Craft Beer, sort of said Polly's are the Welsh versions of Cloud Water. You know, they're, where Cloud Water for Manchester, you've got Cornwall Verdant, for Wales, Polly's are there, are, are the sort of the key, um, the, the key brewery for there. And I really agree with that. I think they're a brilliant, stunning brewery, and I'm always interested to see more from them. So this video has gone on far too long. I hope you enjoyed the little sort of introduction to M&S beers. They'll be coming through soon. I thought my supermarket beer drinking was going to be over for at least a few weeks, but no, I think it's going to be keep going. There's going to be new ones in Morrison's before I know it. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know, have you tried any of these new M&S beers? If you have, let me know which ones I should be looking out for, which ones I should be like, oh, you know, they're not this great. But I'm all of these I'm reasonably excited about. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And until the next one, keep on rocking.